Well, hello once again. This is Cameron Wood, Curator of Collections and Anthropology Educator at the Cranbrook Institute of Science. And uh, I've also, once again, pulled out of our collections a couple of objects to show you. And this time around, I thought we might take a look at hats. Now, hats are something you find worldwide in human cultures, and there are many different varieties, like, for example, the good old ball cap that I'm wearing here. And we wear hats for a variety of different reasons. I have here two different hats from very different parts of the world. On your right, we have here a dupa, sometimes called a tupateka, which is from Uzbekistan. And on my right, your left here, we have a hat called a sukhlain from rural northern Philippine island of Luzon. Two very different hats from different times, worn for remarkably different reasons. Now, the tupateka here was collected up by Dr. Richard Stamps, our adjunct curator of archaeology, retired professor, um, might say emeritus professor of archaeology at Oakland University, and he acquired this in the 1990s while on a UN-sponsored trip to Central Asia and China. And this is a hat that is very typical uh, to be worn by Islamic men of that region of Central Asia, specifically in this case Fergana Valley, and this was likely made in the city of Chent. On the other hand, over here, our Suklang uh, was possibly made as early as uh, the early 20th century and was donated by Jean Graham, and it was collected up by her grandfather, Charles Erwin Wilson, Erwin Wilson, who at one time was the director of General Motors and also served as Dwight D. Eisenhower's Secretary of Defense. Now, both of these are hats, both of them are worn on your head, but worn on your head for very different reasons. And at this point, I'm gonna take the camera, give you a close up look at both of these hats as we talk about how they're made and what their purpose is. Let's start with the dupa. In Muslim culture, it is quite common for men to wear a hat, especially uh, at important social events like going to mosques or weddings or things of that sort. But this type of hat is commonly seen, especially in rural areas, just being worn by the man on the street, as you might say, in Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, and neighboring areas. Now, it is constructed of black silk brocade, and there are embroidered designs on it. They can be quite uh, colorful, depending on the particular ethnic group. Again, this one is very typical of the Chust region of the Fergana Valley. And you can see there is a design on the top. The hat is divided into quarters. And the design that you see are uh, flowers from the chili pepper plant. And they represent helpful protection in each of the four directions. Now, on the sides of the hat, you see looped designs, four on each of the four sides of the hat, giving you, of course, the number 16. This represents the wearer's desire for a big, happy, healthy family of 16 children. Now, this would be worn at uh, any social event of any note and could be worn on the street. You might notice that there are some fold lines. This can actually be folded and just tucked into your belt when you don't want to wear it. So this is a hat that is really making a social statement about what ethnic group you are a part of and uh, your desires for health and a big, happy family. On the other hand, let's take a look at the Suklan from the northern island of the Philippines. This was worn by a young man, unmarried man, as a matter of fact, of the Bontoc people of northern Luzon. Unlike the other one, which is made of silk, this is made of woven plant fiber, decorated with some bird feathers, boar's tusks, and dog's teeth. Now, this is a rather fancy hat, which tells me right away that this was a young, unmarried man. Traditionally, back in the day, this cultural group wore little in the way of clothing. It simply wasn't required in uh, the setting that they lived in. But young boys would start wearing a little cap like this, a plain one, at age four or five. And when they became mature adults, girls in their community would give them a fancier hat decorated like so. This indicated that they were men of warrior age. Now, a fancy one like this with the teeth and decorations was worn by a bachelor when a man married. He wore a rather plainer cap. Now, what's interesting about the two is although they're both hats, they're worn for very different reasons. This one, of course, 
worn to some degree for religious reasons, but also symbolically represents the owner's desire for good health and a large happy family. This one, although it's a hat, effectively is a pocket. Now, this was worn on the back of the head, kind of where you might have um, a bun if you were a woman drying your hair up in our culture, and it was actually held in place by that little band running across the forehead. So, certainly didn't protect the wearer from the elements. It not only advertised one's marital status, it served as a pocket. One would keep a little pouch of tobacco, uh, your fire starting kit, and uh, that would be in a sense a pocket where you could carry your goods for smoking. Your pipe would be tucked in that little strap there, allowing you to carry your pipe almost behind the ear. So, although it is a hat, it really functions in the culture and at the time as a pocket for a man wearing very little clothing. Now, although these hats come from very different parts of the world and were made at different times, probably 1910, uh, 1920, maybe probably in the 1980s, 1990s, they do have commonalities. Of course, they're both worn on the head, but there are, of course, many differences. They're worn for very different reasons. Now, the fun thing with looking at artifacts like this, it's always fun to make what connections you can between the two, even from hats so far separated in space and time. Now, in this case, the commonality is, in fact, world trade and colonial ventures, especially of peoples of the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, the dupa hat here from um, Uzbekistan has chili pepper flowers on it. And of course, chili pepper plants were indigenous to the Americas. And the little Suklang hat here was made in part to carry smoking paraphernalia, one's tobacco, uh, lighter, and uh, pipe. And tobacco, of course, is also indigenous to the Americas. Now, the commonality here is both the pepper plant and tobacco was spread as a result of European exploration, colonization, and trade. Most specifically in this case, um, colonization, colonization and exploration by Portuguese and Spanish peoples of the Iberian Peninsula. The chili pepper being spread to Europe uh, by the Spanish, and then both the chili pepper and tobacco being spread throughout um, Asia and the South Pacific, by and large by the Portuguese, especially during the 17th and 18th century. In fact, even today, the Philippines is one of the world's major producers of tobacco and fine cigars. So thank you for joining us for this intriguing little look at two hats out of the Cranbrook Institute of Science collection and um, one out of the Wood family closet. So join me next time as we take a look at some artifacts out of the Institute of Sciences vault. See you soon.